I'm Sidney Smith, and with me is Lynn Braun. We're here at the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions, where the new guidelines for cholesterol management have been presented. Lynn's going to talk to us a little bit about the management of cholesterol, blood cholesterol in women. Lynn, what do we have that's new? Well, first of all, it's um, although women uh, tend to get their uh, uh, ASCVD events a little bit later than men, um, it's it's important to note that um, that uh, cardiovascular disease is still the number one killer of American women. So that's you know that's critical, mm -hmm. and the secondary and primary prevention components of this guideline apply to women as well as men. And I assume the therapy works just as well in women as men. It does. Uh, the secondary prevention studies have certainly shown that women derive the same benefits. In many of the primary prevention studies, there were fewer women than men, and those studies were not really pr uh, powered mm -hmm. to for subgroup analyses. So, you know, that's why there may be some differences in the results. That being said, uh, though we the the primary and secondary prevention components of this guideline again apply to women. Very important. So the new classes of drugs, two new evidence-based classes, azetamide and PCSK9 in inhibition, apply to the women. We see that they would apply right. to the high-risk women. Mm -hmm. Yes women who have atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, or perhaps women with familial hypercholesterolemia, if their LDL uh, threshold is not where it should be. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's greater than 70 or greater than 100, depending on, you know, what disease entity we're talking about. Are there any new recommendations? There are. There are new recommendations. We would like all providers, whether they're um, physicians or nurse practitioners, whether they're, uh, depending, it doesn't matter what discipline they're in, primary care providers, cardiologists, uh, cardiology nurse practitioners or PAs, ob to really um, do a thorough history of pregnancy-related complications and a menstrual history on these women because we do know that uh, that certain disorders during pregnancy, such as preeclampsia, increase a woman's risk for cardiovascular disease later in life by twofold or greater, and early menopause, which we are defining as um, age less than 40 years, um, also increases a woman's risk for cardiovascular disease. So very we want important point. Very important point. And these, in fact, are enhancing factors. So when during the, the course of the clinician-patient discussion, it's important for the provider, if they're aware of these, uh, and that's why they need to do the history, to bring up uh, these enhancing factors because that may help determine uh, the course of treatment, whether it's lifestyle alone or perhaps lifestyle plus a statin. And this might be someone with a risk somewhere between 5 and 20 percent. Absolutely. And you're try we're, we are sitting and we're talking and the patient is trying to decide, well, I really want to take statins. Mm -hmm. This enhancing factor is very important. They are. For them to understand. Absolutely, absolutely. Certainly, we know that um, some women do have gestational diabetes, but we feel, for example, that that is covered in the other enhancing factors mm -hmm. because we have metabolic syndrome, and then uh, the other component of the guideline is a man or a woman with diabetes. The other thing that uh, I think is really important has been, if we're talking about primary prevention, and we're getting down into the 30s, that's the time when women are bearing children. It is. So we need to think a little bit about recommendations that might relate to taking statin therapy if you're gonna take it, or are there other precautions? So these may be women that are very high risk because they have FH, or maybe they have um, early manifestations of um, um, Cardiovascular disease, or perhaps they, um, you know, they have a fa they have a strong family history. Um, 
statins are still contraindicated in pregnant women. Mm -hmm. So it's important that if we're placing a woman on a statin that we counsel her to use effective birth control. Exactly. And if she's planning a pregnancy, she needs to stop the statin one to two months before attempting pregnancy. And if perchance she does get pregnant while taking a statin, the statin should be immediately stopped. I think these are all important points. They're very and, important. Uh, now, the other uh, situation that comes up is uh, the woman who, let's say, is, is 40. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has a lipid panel that looks very good. Um, I think it's important to tell them, you know, um, you need to come back when you're in your mid-50s and check it again because Absolutely. that lipid panel may be totally different and you may find yourself at risk. Absolutely. Every woman needs to be followed mm -hmm. and we need to counsel every woman like every man on a life course of, of healthy behavioral changes, you know, a heart healthy diet as well as regular exercise. I want to ask a question that beyond the guidelines, this is included in the guidelines, the idea of a team. And you are very much involved in uh, patient care, health provider as a nurse. If you think about modifying behavior, it really doesn't happen in a 15 minute visit with a cardiologist or even a nurse the first time around. It doesn't. Don't, if we're going to get this done, don't we really need to think about how we work through behavior modification with patients? We do, and this is why as a nurse practitioner I've negotiated 30 minutes, 30 minute appointments with, um, with my patients. It, it's very important. Um, it takes time, it takes an evaluation of a woman's day-to-day -day life so we can help her integrate changes into her life. It involves, um, it, it involves learning what her goals are and selecting a behavior change that's most important to her first mm -hmm. and using any resources we may have available, any apps or um, just, you know, ed educate her, sometimes bringing in the family so that, uh, so that they can make behavior changes together. Anything we could think of that can help move the needle for that woman. Well, I hope that a lot of these ideas will move forward as the guidelines come out, then it will be very inclusive of women. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you.